Hello, um, I'm Hal. I'm the manager of educational technology. Thank you for that wondrous introduction. I sound very important. Uh, we're in the same office, so I'm going to start with Dr. Patel. Hi, I'm Shelley Patel. Um, we're going to be talking about assessing real-world items with ExamSoft. So not necessarily doing standard examination formats, but looking at things that are necessarily non-standard. And mostly it's going to be Dr. Patel, because she's done all the work, and all I am is tech support. So a little bit about the university and the school. Uh, we have 10 accredited programs here at the University of Texas School of Dentistry at Houston. We have a Doctor of Dental Surgery program which takes in 100 students each year and lasts for four years. We have a dental hygiene program, which is two years in length and takes in 40 students. So right now we have 480 students plus our residency programs. We have two primary care general practice residency programs and six specialty programs. I think in total we probably have about 80 or 90 residents in total uh, between endodontics, uh, facial surgery, orthodontics, perio, pediatrics, and prosthodontics. We picked up ExamSoft in 2011 um, and we did a pilot with them and then did a soft rollout. Uh, we have never mandated that any of our faculty use this software, but at this point we have 85 to 90 percent uh, usage across our didactic and preclinical courses, uh, which is pretty good. And soon we should have pretty close to 100 because our endodontic specialty is about to come in basically all, all in from zero to 100%. Um, we have basically everything ExamSoft offers. We have rubrics, we have all of the add-ons, we use iPads and all of that kind of thing. Currently our question bank stands at over 20,000 questions. Uh, primarily this is didactic. We have flirted a little with using it in clinical courses, but uh, it's not very well done there yet. But preclinic has been using it to great effect, and that is what Dr. Patel is about to tell you all about. So as uh, Stephanie mentioned, I uh, uh, direct Operative One uh, Didactic and uh, uh, Lab Director for Operative Two. Uh, basically, at UTSD here, um, our Operative 1 is designed for freshman dental students, and Operative 2 is designed for our sophomore dental students. Uh, each of those courses are a semester long, and they consist of two separate units, the didactic portion and the laboratory portion. The didactic portion, we meet twice a week uh, for two hours. Um, we meet in a lecture hall setting where we teach um, operative concepts, uh, preparation, restoration, and restorative materials to our students. Uh, about four years ago, we moved all our exams into ExamSoft. Um, they consist of multiple choice, fill in the blank, and true and false style, uh, false style questions. Uh, basically, uh, it uh, saved us some time uh, from printing our exams and then dealing with scantrons after all. But um, what is challenging to us is our laboratory portion. This is uh, the portion of the course where students meet in a simulation uh, clinical setting and uh, they then have to um, take that knowledge that they learn in the didactic portion of the course and develop and constantly improve their fine motor skills. And the objective of the class is to eventually uh, prepare the students uh, at their second semester sophomore to do restorative work in clinic and then sort of graduate into more complex restorative procedures in their third and fourth year in the clinical settings. So because the laboratory portion of operative uh, deals with hand skills, it is very important for us to assess their work with giving uh, many practical exams. In operative one, uh, we give about 10 practical exams. Five of those are basically students preparing teeth, um, remove diseased tissue and prepare teeth, and then five of the exams is when they restore the teeth with different types of restorative material. And uh, in Operative 2, they take seven of those. And in Operative 1, in addition to the 10 practicals, they also have an instrument and tooth ID exam. And I will talk about that a little bit further later on. 
But to give you a little perspective, that means that I personally have to grade about 5,000 short answer questions just for the laboratory portion. And uh, myself, uh, my co-director, and uh, depending on the semester, uh, somewhere from six to eight additional faculty as instructors help me grade 1,700 teeth. So it can be quite daunting. It's a lot to grade throughout the year. So that's why we thought implementing uh, ExamSoft to basically help us grade the practical exams could be really beneficial. So for the sake of understanding this presentation a little better, we categorized our practicals into two categories. One is the motor skill-based practical exam, and then the other one is the knowledge skill-based practical exam. So let's first focus on the motor skill uh, practical. So that's basically the 17 exams that the students take um, from operative one and operative two. Uh, that's when they uh, take plastic teeth on mannequins and they prepare them and then they eventually fill them. A few years back, we developed this uh, rubric uh, that we use, for example, this one on the display is used to grade that uh, silver filling on the top of the presentation. Um, about four years ago, we decided that it would be best for all the faculty to get together in a conference room after each practical to grade the teeth together. And the purpose for that was to basically help everybody be on the same page, so help them calibrate and reduce uh, subjectivity. Uh, so basically you got one, let's consider this one item, one category. So this category is assigned to faculty number one. So the tooth uh, of, the, of a student uh, with this criteria sheet goes sort of down from faculty one who will grade category one and then will pass that criteria sheet to the faculty number two who will then grade category number two and so on and so forth throughout this assembly line of faculty till the end where I get it and I'm the one who has to sit down and calculate the grade. Now that is about 200 um, criteria sheet after each practical and um, it is quite um, humbling when students come to you afterward and they don't have any question about their technique part but they have they're questioning your arithmetic and um, unfortunately I have to say that I've had so many of no shining moment where I've made a mistake in computing their grades so um, the beauty of ExamSoft was that it allowed us to convert this rubric into its software and allowed us to, to give um, percentage values to each uh, category so that now instead of the physical criteria sheet and the typodon going down the faculty assembly, the iPad with the typodon goes down. And so each um, faculty uh, who is assigned to a particular category then grades the category by touching the screen and then passes it on to the next category, uh, to the next faculty. And by the time I receive the typo done and the, and the um, iPad, there's magically the uh, final score is computed and is correct every time. So that's clearly an advantage that we have. Another advantage of this software that it and it, analyze, it uh, analyzes all the, uh, all the grades, so you have instantly the range of scores of students, and also you can then analyze each item. So you can see how students have done in each category, and uh, if the students haven't done very well in the category, you can pinpoint it and then hopefully revisit that um, at, during lecture time and uh, hopefully uh, clarify some misunderstandings. Another advantage of this is that now we have centralized criteria sheets. Previously, you know, students had their physical criteria sheet and I am ashamed to say, but this is my office as of two days ago and it's probably gotten worse since. I'm working on 10 different projects at the same time and you can tell that things can get lost very fast. Um, sad to say that this is a picture of one of my students' locker. And as you can see, their organizational skills are no better than mine. So between the two of us, the criteria sheet 
gets lost for sure. And so, but now having it saved electronically in the system, we can pull it up, we can make notes during the practical, during the time we're, we're grading the students, and uh, we can review those notes, we can explain to them what why we gave them the grade we gave them, and it eliminates all this uh, confusion in between. Our uh, second type of practical is the knowledge skill based practical, and this is um, basically very um, relevant to um, a lot of exams that probably medical students take. Uh, <clears throat> What we do is we make uh, different stations with different instruments or different teeth and we ask them about the functions or the name of the instruments or the planes of the teeth uh, as it's relative to operative uh, world. So every year I give this exam, I uh, afterward, after the exam is done, I I question myself why I did that because now I have to read 5,000 questions and uh, I have to be very objective and uh, usually I give this exam at the end of January but it takes me over a month to grade and read every exam so usually the students get their exams back end of February if they're lucky but most of the time at the beginning of March and so um, that whole learning benefit is gone because by then they're not interested in going back and reviewing their mistakes. They've already moved on. They've already probably have taken too many exams. So um, we thought that it would be very beneficial to use ExamSoft in this kind of um, exam. So we split the class into two groups. Uh, again, we kept our 50 stations um, with 50 questions. Students brought their laptops and iPads. We transferred all our questions into ExamSoft in a fill-in-the-blank kind of format. And again, uh, the students had one minute per station. And I have a video here for you to play for you so you get an idea. Uh, again, here's the station. There's the tooth. There's a flashcard with the question. But the same question is also on their web, uh, on their laptop or iPad, and so they can answer. They can look at the tooth or the instrument, and they can go ahead and type their answers immediately into the computer. And what happens is uh, that cuts my time from one month to three hours of grading. Um, with the help of uh, my uh, wonderful colleague here, Hal, uh, I'm able to put all the, all the answers that are acceptable uh, and then the computer, the software does its own thing where it can compute and, and see if the students got the answer right and give them the appropriate um, uh, score. So uh, doing an overall evaluation of our implementation of ExamSoft, I can tell you that this has immensely saved our time. Uh, in addition to that, students can receive uh, quick or faster feedback. Um, you know, this generation of students, uh, they've grown up with computers, with iPads, with iPhones, so they expect really quick turnaround. Now. Um, Hal, who is about to finish his uh, PhD in education, doesn't agree with this point. He believes good education um, is good education regardless of these generational gaps. As long as you set expectation, uh, they will follow. But I've had different experiences with, with my students. So either way, it depends. It doesn't matter which, which philosophy you believe in. It does help with the quick uh, turnaround. Also, you can identify weaker students uh, faster in the semester and hopefully help them to uh, eliminate any kind of inadequate habits that they're forming. And as I told you before, you could um, do item analysis. So you can look at the whole class and see as a whole what areas they're making a lot of mistakes. And now you can go in the lecture and clarify um, any misconceptions. Now, do we have time to play around? No, this is not what faculty are doing, but what we, we do is we have more time to teach instead of grade, and that's the whole purpose. Um, and the students appreciate that when you spend more one-on-one -on -one time with them instead of sitting in your office locking the door and actually grading. Uh, there are some challenges in implementing these kind of programs. The, uh, there's time 
constraint. You have to convert all your exams and rubrics. Uh, faculty training, again, I could not do this by myself. I always need Hal to help me. And of course, availability of iPads uh, for the faculty that are involved in grading. Um, but it clearly has helped me um, grade faster and more efficient. Now, having said all of that, I have to thank our dean, Dr. Valenza. He's always promoting uh, technology in education. And also our associate dean, Dr. Walji, um, for uh, providing uh, us with uh, iPads and also with great staff such as Hal. And then my operative team, um, they're always open to new innovation. Um, and they just want to make this experience better for our students. And now, um, I guess we're ready for any, any questions that y'all might have. Thank you. Ooh. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel and Hal. Um, we're going to go ahead and open the floor up to uh, Q&A right now. So if you do have a question, now would be the time uh, to type it through the questions area of the uh, GoToWebinar control panel, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen. Type it in there, and I can write or read it out uh, for both of the presenters to respond to. Um, we already have a couple of questions come in, so I'm going to go ahead and just dive right in if you guys are ready. Go ahead. Wonderful. Um, first question is: Is once you're once you're identifying students who need help, what does your remediation process look like? Well, um, I, I do have a tutoring system in place where uh, once I identify weak students, I assign them to a tutoring system. And basically what that is, is I have sophomores who have done really well um, in operative, uh, then they get assigned to uh, individual students, the weaker students, and uh, they have one-on-one -on -one sessions before the next practical. I hope that answered the, answered the question. It's talking to nothing. Yes, go. Yep. The next question is, uh, how does ExamSoft integrate with your LMS? So we actually moved recently from Blackboard to Canvas. And at the moment, as with our Blackboard installation, we still have to take the grids manually and enter them. Um, and that can be either done by printing out the report and actually typing them directly into the grid center or the grid module or it can be done by pulling down an Excel sheet from both systems and merging them together. Uh, we recently looked at the ExamSoft block for pushing grades, and right now it was considered not to be secure enough for us, but we're hoping by January, February time, we should be able to implement that when ExamSoft brings up single sign-on and SAML support. So we'll then be able to push grades directly from ExamSoft straight into our LMS where they'll be calculated for final grade. Great, thanks so much, Hal. Uh, next question is, and this is a little bit lengthy, so bear with me for just a second. Um, question is, I would like to know if there is a way that students can get access to the exam questions once they have taken the exam. Is there a tool I can use after the exam has been graded so that students can go back and revisit the questions that gave them trouble to gain better understanding of what and why they missed a question so that they can strengthen their understanding and gain better metacognitive skills? Yes. In ExamSoft, you can actually set um, rationales behind all of the answers to your questions as you type them in. And as part of the system, when you release an exam, particularly we do it with our um, standard multi-choice and just straightforward classroom exams, it's quite common for our faculty to do a review session. And that can either be immediately after the exam, or it can be at a future date where they re-download the file, and then they reopen it. And basically, it will show them the questions. It will show them what they answered, as well as the correct answer and any rationales that you have. And you can go through it as a group. Uh, it unscrambles everything. So everybody's question one is the same again. So you can actually talk about it as a, um, and support the questions that they're asking questions about. Um, in addition to that, you can also run individual reports for students that come to your office that just shows the questions they got wrong. Um, there's a lot of back-end support in the reporting for the system that will let you guide your faculty and aid in your teaching as you go forward with this stuff. One of the biggest strengths we've seen from this 
is that our faculty are now more confident making changes to their future presentations and classroom stuff based on the evidence they're getting from their assessment that's provided by ExamSoft. Okay, next question is, how do you control cheating? How do we control, how do you control cheating? Um, we have, I think with the 50 station system, there's actually a gap between the students, so they can't really see each other's work. Generally, we have, because of our setup here, we do exams in our classrooms on the students' own laptops. And the security of the software, we have never had a problem with. We've never had a student who's managed to hack in and steal the questions, which is something our faculty was originally very nervous about. Everything is password protected, and we've never had a problem like that. We did recently have an issue of mechanical copying, where we had a student sat next to another student regularly in exams, and they were getting very close grades to the point that the faculty who was actually proctoring them became suspicious that there was a collusion going on. So she used the system, the software, to pull all of the information out about the questions they'd answered for seven exams and did a statistical analysis that compared the answers they got right with the answers they got wrong the same and then ran a report of all of the students in that year which compared them with every other student and mapped it on a great, it's very fantastic to look at. It's not part of ExamSoft, but the stats for this are amazing, and it wouldn't be possible if ExamSoft didn't have the uh, numbers available. Um, and then once those students were identified as outliers, as in potential collusion was present, we actually went through and looked at their snapshots for the exam. So ExamSoft records what a student does at every point in their exam. So we compared their exams, to, and at that point, one of the students was clearly copying from the other, and since then, we have let that student go. And I have to say, because of ExamSoft, we were able to actually prove that this was going on. Now, as far as the practical exams, what we have done, we've had cases of cheating, unfortunately, but what we have done since is that we order uh, teeth that are marked by the company. So every practical has a different marking. So there's no way that the students have access to these or know what kind of marking will be on the tooth or what color of marking will be on the tooth. So we even get, we get virgin teeth where they, can, they have to prepare with the certain markings. And then uh, we also get prep teeth that they will then restore. And those also have markings on them. And we give those to students right before the practical. So about five minutes before the practical starts. Um, I don't know if that's bulletproof, but as of right now, that's the best system we got. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, do you use the iPads connected wirelessly during testing, or can you download tests and go offline, then update them? So for ExamSoft, all testing is offline. So you release the exam to the system, regardless of whether it's rubric-based or whether it's um, an actual exam and the students we normally release our exams somewhere between two to five days prior to the exam date so the students have that time to download the exam they don't know the password so it just sits on their computer or their iPad waiting to be taken and the reason we do that is we don't want a hundred students all hitting our Wi-Fi all at the same time downloading the exam so when they're ready they get in the classroom they open up their laptops or their iPads to the software the proctor gives them the password ExamSoft locks up so you can't get out of the software. They take their exam. When they're done, they upload their exam to the system. And the only times they're connected to Wi-Fi is just before it locks up the system. Their Wi-Fi is cut off by the system, so they're not online during the exam. So the only time they then come back out of the exam and it connects to our Wi-Fi again. So there is at no point where you're connected to Wi-Fi during testing. And that was another reason we actually went with ExamSoft. We don't have a computer room large enough to seat our class, so we needed to be able to use their own devices. And this system has proven to be very secure, and we have, touch wood, not lost a single exam yet. Great, next question. What challenges did you face in converting questions to one centralized ExamSoft bank? Um, we have, my office is the Office of Education, well, my group is the Group of Educational Technology within Technology Services. Um, I know not, not all schools have 
someone like me and my team to help them out. But we basically implemented a system where faculty would come to us of their own volition and they would say, I want to go into ExamSoft. And after our pilot, we had some very successful champions come out of that and it drove a lot of our faculty into the system uh, after they saw the time savings. But uh, they come along with their exams and they're generally on paper. And we've developed a system where we can show them how to pass the exam. So basically we put it into a format that ExamSoft can accept and we show the faculty how we do that. And at that point, we will then together, we'll upload that exam into the system, we'll set it up with them, we'll get it going. Basically, we handhold them the whole way the first time. The second exam they do, we'll expect them to create the file, we'll help them if they need it, and we'll expect them to be able to go through the process of releasing it. And basically, we'll be there, but we're not going to do all the work for them. And hopefully, by the third contact with this, they're uploading their own questions into the pool, they're designing their own exams, they're releasing them to the students, and they're proctoring them. We're always available to help, but the aim is to make our faculty as self-sufficient with the system as possible. Like I said before, ideally, I don't want to be asked to do anything in any, you know, about works, but my aim is to be just sitting in my office watching stuff on YouTube all day long. Well, I have to say that <laughs> never happens to him because uh, I, I, um, I get him to have help me almost every time and um, uh, it's it's time consuming um, I think at the beginning but it becomes really easier when students come to your office and you can immediately access their exams or their practicals and go over it with them um, so it's a little work at the beginning but I think it pays off um, as you meet with students I, I do honestly think as well that Dr. Patel selling herself short. I think she could easily do this without my input if she needed to. I think as a lot of faculty, they just feel better having the support present. If I was vanished all of a sudden, I think she'd be fine. <laughs> that, that actually leads quite well into the next question we have. Uh, the question is, do you foresee a time when you could do this without how? I'm asking this because we are just getting started with rubrics and the learning curve on rubrics on the rubrics interface seems to be less intuitive to the faculty in my opinion. Yes, it, it is it is I agree with that statement. It is less intuitive. Um, I think I have watched Hal enough so that I could do it. It would just take me longer. Um, so I, if I had the time, I think I would be more independent, but it's nice to know that I have him so I can rely on him. But yes, I think I've done it enough that I could figure, figure it out by myself, but um, I rely on him heavily. That's good. Job security. <laughs> it is great job security, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next question is, have you, imp have you implemented using categories, and if yes, do you make these mandatory? Um, we did a soft rollout initially, and one of the things I would always advise anyone who's picking ExamSoft up for the first time is build a category structure that makes sense to you right at the very beginning, and have the faculty begin to use it immediately. Right now, we're looking at a very large categorization project. It's actually li listed on my to-do list right at the very top under projects. It says ExamSoft categories. Um, we actually have got a system in place now where we want to map our questions to individual syllabus objectives for each course, to um, competencies that come out of our uh, Office of Student Affairs, and then ultimately to our CODA standards which is um, basically, I guess, how we get our dentist to be a dentist. Um, we want at least those three categories for every question, um, and that's going to require pressure from some of our associate deans to make our faculty do it all now, that we're doing it uh, retroactively. Um, we have some courses that are fully categorized, and we're seeing great benefits with that. It is very, very powerful on the reporting side. We're looking at it once we get it all complete, as a tool for um, CODA review when they come around to see how good we are, that we're actually looking at our questions, but also as a, a tool to provide some structure for curriculum analysis and potential curriculum redesign. Great, thank you. Next question is, 
is it a problem in putting in correct answers in multiple ways? I teach nursing, and we would need to accept different spellings of the same answer. For example, if you were using millimeters, lowercase MLS, or spelling out millimeters, or capital MLS, et cetera, as a unit for uh, a medication. So for the questions particularly here, oh, here we go, we're going back. Um, what you have is when you design a fill-in-the-blanks question, you give it one answer that you would consider the correct one. And you can see it here on the screen as the original answer. So for that question, the answer was class six. But when you actually give the exam, the students can type in whatever they like, and you go back, and ExamSoft will show you a list of the student responses organized by frequency. And then all you need to do is there's a button to the right of each one, and you just click the ones you accept, and then hit save. And it adjusts the answer to everything that those students responded that you find acceptable for that blank. At that point, it regrades it, and you're done, which is how Dr. Patel managed to get it from one month to three hours, is she just opens it up, works through each question, checks the ones she'll accept, hit serve, and she can get through 50 questions in no time for 100 students. So that's reading 100 questions once versus 100 times. Yes. Uh, okay, great. Next question is, have you had issues with students' exam upload time prior to them having to go and take another exam? And if so, 